I recently had to do some tiling for my house and I thought I would uh, design the tiling in SketchUp first um, and I'll go through some of the uh, benefits that it gave me. Um, first benefit uh, to designing your tiling job in SketchUp is that you can fairly quickly get a glimpse of what the colours are going to look like together or the styles of tiles are going to look like together helps you to visualise all the components of the tiles when they're together without having to um, get halfway through a job and realise the colours don't suit each other. Uh, the second uh, benefit is when you go to uh, all of the tiles SketchUp will quickly tell you how many square metres you need. Now that's beneficial because uh, less trips down to the hardware shop and the third benefit I found to drawing up your tiles on SketchUp was that uh, you're able to work out exactly uh, where those tiles should be set. So you can um, go to that texture position and move them around and work out where, where's the best place for these tiles to sit um, so you can avoid uh, breaking tiles, um, make the cutting easier and make it look a little bit nicer. The first step to um, tiling for me was to go down to my local uh, tile shop and take some photos of the different tiles they had for sale. Uh, you could also get some tiles off the internet um, if you didn't want to drive all the way to the shop but um, it might not match up with the same tiles that the uh, tile shop sell. It's important that when you get your photos from the tile shop that you measure those tiles plus the intended thickness of your outline. That's important when we import it into our uh, SketchUp that you have that information. So when you take your photos, get some measurements of the tile that you're taking a photo of, jot down the size of it plus the grout line. Basically what you need to do is um, go and get your tiles, take a photo of those, and the problem is that when you take a photo of them, uh, they'll never be perfectly aligned in front of the camera. So you have to um, use a skew option. Um, I'm using uh, Photoshop, but um, I'm sure there's other programs you can use as well. Um, just to skew this up, you can go to your, your tile shop with your uh, mobile phone, use a camera on that, go home and use a bit of uh, software to edit that right. Now, if you're lucky enough to have Photoshop on your computer, the first thing you need to do is define the tile that's least affected by light variance. Um, you can see there's a, a light patch over here and another slightly light patch over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this tile here. I'm going to use the, um, the crop tool and crop that tile. Um, what I can then do is to select the picture go to edit transform and skew and drag these corners to try and get those tire lines to look straight doesn't matter if it's a little bit um, not square at the moment it could be a little bit rectangular as long as you get those tile lines straight it's looking better but as you crop again a bit closer you might see that it's needs some little adjustments again. So we're going to select it again. And just get it a bit closer to where we need it. That's probably close enough to do what you need to do. Now, when you're uh, preparing your, your file to import into SketchUp, what we have to do is to only include two grout lines. That way, when we tile it in SketchUp, it will all fit together correctly. If you include all your grout lines, what it means is when you tile it in SketchUp, you're going to have double grout lines on your... Um, photo and it's not going to look 
very realistic. Okay, so this is what we're after. We can then save that onto um, our computers and import them into SketchUp. When you go to save your file, make sure that you save it as a JPEG. Um, there are other formats that uh, SketchUp recognises, but JPEG's the, um, the most common and the easiest to import. Second step would be to go and get some measurements of the room that you want to tile and quickly jot those measurements down on a scrap of paper. So do a rough drawing, get some measurements down, and then you can transfer for those measurements onto your SketchUp. So if you've drawn something like this, this was my uh, laundry area. Um, you've got a blank spot space. We now have to work out how to import those tiles. Um, now there's a few different ways of importing, but uh, the way I did it was to go into my paint bucket tool. Um, first of all, you need to go create material. And uh, you want to name that material so you don't lose it within all the other different um, tiles. Once you've made a surface to import, what you have to do is to go to the edit function and go here and browse. So you'll then find the tile that you had uh, edited in your Photoshop or other program and import it like that. So the next step is to resize it to make it the correct size for your model. Now we have to refer to the measurements we made earlier at the tile shop. Um, for me, it was 305. And it was 305 again. And that's in millimetres. Um, something that's popping up at the moment, when I change one, the other changes as well because that image wasn't perfectly square. What you have to do is to unlock um, the relationship between the two so it can actually skew that picture out. Once that's complete, you can paste those tiles onto your object and you'll be able to see how they look. And that should be to scale, providing that you do your original drawing to scale also. You should repeat this process as many times as you need to until you end up with uh, all the different types of tiles that you want um, and find a good combination of them. So practice uh, and when you find what you need and you're happy with it, then you can look at ordering your tiles. So what you can do is to select the area you want to measure up and you can do that by um, selecting all of those areas that you want. Uh, we've got our um, three different areas here marked out. And then right click on it and go to enter the information. But um, at the moment it's done it in middle, millimeters for me. So if you're in feet squares or um, meter square for me, 
you need to go to the uh, model info and change those to the appropriate uh, measurements that you're looking at. Once that's done, it will then tell me that for the whole job, I need 15.1 meters square. Um, you'd have to consider that uh, when you lay your tiles down, you're going to break some. Um, you're going to have some edges that, uh, and some wastage when you cut them. Um, so for me, I'd be probably buying about 16 meters um, to start with for this job. And if you also need to um, work out your wall, wall tiles, you can um, do that as well. Now, for the wall tiles I used, I used a, um, a feature tile running through the center. So um, your feature tiles you can work out by um, length per meter. Um, you can do that by, if you click the separate lines, like this, and, and uh, work your way all through the... Uh, bathroom and kitchen, right click on those, it will tell you um, the length in meters um, or you can just simply get your um, measuring tape out and measure how many uh, lineal meters of uh, feature toll you need. Um, and for the just the plain wall tiles you would then select just the areas that you need, um, right click and that would tell you how many meters for those areas as well. So you're going to need to jot all this down on, on paper. So when you go to the tile shop, you'll know what you need. We have to tile around everything that's already there. Um, for instance, when you get around to uh, the cupboard here, we've got to make some uh, pretty tricky cuts to those tiles. Now, depending on where the uh, the tiles are positioned, it will alter how difficult some of the cuts are. Um, first thing, you probably want to find a straight edge in your room, and preferably the largest area in the room, the largest straight edge, is probably where you're going to start your tiling from. Um, in my kitchen, we had a large wall against here. Um, and that's where I started my tiling. Um, also, if you're looking, I've got two entry points into the kitchen. Um, if you select your floor, right click, go to texture, go to position, you can drag that position around. Um, but as your entryways, you wouldn't want to have a little section of a tile as you enter. Um, the constant walking and stepping on that tile will eventually bust that tile off. Um, so you try to average that distance out if you can. Um, so we're looking at the bottom, needs to be straight along the surface, just lining up. And if we ad average out these two entry points, so we've got the majority of a tile to both entry points, um, that should be a fair solution for this kitchen. Now, something else you can do, you can look around, like this corner I was looking at before, um, to see any tricky bits. Um, so, for instance, this one here, I was actually able to cut this tile without too many difficulties. But um, if it had been like thinner like this, it most would have certainly would have busted off um, as I went to cut it with the diamond cutter. Um, so if that's the case, if you've got lots of tricky points like that, um, you'd have to alter your tile placing again, all that, those placements. Now if you didn't have Google SketchUp to work all these placements out, um, it would involve a fair bit of maths um, and a fair bit of time. Um, so not only has Google SketchUp enabled me to line up all my tiles so by working in Google SketchUp it has taken me a, a probably a, a couple of hours to sit down and, and plan this but the benefits I got from it was being able to visualize uh, what it's going to look like being able to make quick adjustments and quick modifications and to space all those tiles out to get all the right correct number of tiles um, Another thing that came up when I was tiling was um, 
for working on the bathroom. Now, the tiles in the bathroom were, um, I was starting them off at the bottom of the shower. The reason why I started the tile tiles off as a, as a complete tile at the bottom of the shower was that the old tiles that were cut along the bottom of the shower uh, had moisture absorbed into them and where it was cut seemed to be prone an area that's prone to um, cracking the tile over the years so the moisture that um, gets absorbed into the tile is going to be more than if you've cut it than if you've left a full tile so I started at the bottom of the shower so the shower would um, be more uh, durable um, and continued the tiles up the wall. Now the wall, the tiles didn't um, hit the top of the shower where the top of the shower is. They had to keep going a little bit. So I had a couple of options. One option was to cut those tiles um, to match the top of the shower and the other option was to continue those up. So uh, basically if you wanted to get a idea of the difference you could um, grab the top, grab your move tool and drag that down. So with some quick modifications you can quickly get the idea of um, what your bathroom is going to look like. Now in my opinion um, the first option with the complete tile um, looked to be the nicest option. Um, and that's the one I went for. Um, so instead of thinking about stuff, looking at it and thinking about it, um, you can quickly change those options to find what looks desirable to you. Another um, thing that we did was um, we trialled running floor tiles up the side of the bath. Now, if you wanted to get an idea of the difference of that, the original tiles had little small wall tiles and um, you can go to your eyedropper tool in the paint bucket and grab those wall tiles and paste them down. Now by looking at the bathroom I, I preferred the uh, floor tiles. I thought they, that number one, they made the bath look um, stronger in a way because like, the, the floor tiles here were based on um, stone tiles so it, and the darkness and, and the color of them made the bath look stronger um, and just just enhanced the bathroom in my opinion um, I thought running the wall tiles on the front of the bath just added too much um, too much of that that wideness to the bathroom so um, it definitely in my opinion enhanced that bathroom to run the the floor tiles up the side of the bath. 